Today's video was sponsored by Pop Culture Zone Pressing Services. If you need your comic books pressed, I personally vouch for Pop Culture Zone as being one of the best professional companies in the game, offering hands down the lowest prices out there. Services start at only $9.99, and every order placed will receive free fast track turnaround times. Even though I press comics for my personal collection, whenever I need a professional press for my key comics, I send them off to Pop Culture Zone and every single book that I've received back, every single one has had results that have exceeded my expectations and I am sure that they will exceed your expectations as well. Make sure you go check the link in the description below to head over to their website, popculturezone.com for complete details on services and how to begin your order. What is going on everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. This video today is uh, when trying to sell comics that you really know nothing about goes wrong. <laughs> for those that aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the links in the description below as well, but we're going to have fun with this, guys, going into a back and forth Facebook chat that I had today with an individual that is trying to sell comics that clearly does not know what they're doing. And I'm going to break this down, not in a way to, you know, just laugh at somebody or create a mockery or somebody. Everything that I do is always meant to be educational. And I even tried to, you know, educate this individual a little bit, but that didn't go over so well. And we're going to get into that. So what I do is I'm on Facebook Constantly looking at Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I have. I'm a part of like local garage sale groups, and I'm all. I'm always in the hunt, right? So I saw this post for comic books come up on the marketplace, and they're in Stockton, which isn't too far from me. I think Stockton's about a thirty minute drive or so. And I saw a short box of comics. I said, okay. Let me look at this and let me reach out. And this is our back and forth here. I just reached out and said, hi, how much for the comics? They said, can make offer. I said, do you have any more pictures? Because all that was there was this picture right here of a, um, basically, it wasn't even a short box. It was a bin. So I'm thinking there may have been like 80 comics in that bin, maybe a little more. Now, I did notice there are little like paper slips that they put in each or each comic book. And they're sticking out with a little price on it. Now, keep in mind, each one of these books is sitting in this bin without a bag and board on it. They're sitting there just completely raw and exposed. All right. So that right there, I was like, oh, boy, here we go. Uh, so they said, I do. Lot, lots more, too. They sent some pictures. So let's go through these pictures. Some, some interesting books here. I mean, we got some early, you know, uh, the, the Equal Comics Judge Dread. Uh, we got a Transformers number one. I mean, there's a nice, nice solid key right there. Um, whoops. Let's go back in here. We got First Appearance of Scott Lang. Uh, we got some Gru. Uh, we got some Bronze Age Uncanny. Uh, some Copper Age Uncanny. We got uh, Rogue Joins the X-Men right here. Uh, some Marvel Universe stuff. We got some Secret Wars, the original. Uh, Master, early Masters of the Universe is from uh, 82, the first three of three. And then uh, here, Titania, Marvel Secret Wars. So there's some decent books here. This isn't just, uh, you know, 50 cent bin uh, garbage. But if you look at the books, actually, let's bring these back up and we're going to zoom in. The books, like I said, are all sitting here without bags and boards. And you can see this little paper right here with the price. $70. We're going to get into that. But look at this book. You got color breaks over here. I mean, the the edge, color breaks, uh, damage corners, color breaks on the top of the book. Wearing color breaks here. The spines are all beat up. These are not anywhere near high-grade books. Um... That's just the Judge Dread, Judge Dread, and they're asking $7. We're going to get into the price point in a minute. I mean, even look at this Transformers here. Um, you know, really beat up along the spine. You can see color breaking ticks all along the spine. You see all this color breaking up here, blending of the of the edges. Uh, that's a blended corner up there. Not too bad up there, but I mean, you can even see right down here too. That's just from 
the books not being in bags and boards that th this lip is happening right here. Uh, and then as you get down here, you can see it even worse. Uh, there's some color. Well, I don't know if that's color. Here's a big color break increase right here that, you know, it's hard to see all these in the pictures. But look at this. It goes and who knows how far up it goes. But uh, I mean, again, these are these are mid grade books uh, at, at best. You know, first appearance of Scott Lang. Look at this. You got color rub and tons of color breaking ticks, really deep color breaking tick right there. Um, and again, on white, we're probably not even able to see all the creases. Uh, you can tell these books again, the lip happening over here, put them in, in, in some type of bin and, uh, keeping them out of bags and boards. That's what we're dealing with here. So let me show you guys how I responded after seeing these pictures, because I was looking at the prices too. I, I next asked, I said, do you know how many books there are in total? And I'm curious about the prices on the yellow tabs. Are those your asking prices? And I, and they say they are all make offer open sunday 10 30 to 3 next gen liquidation so this is this is a liquidation store and you know so i, I can assume that a liquidation store either uh, they, they probably get donations or they even have some type of contracts with um actual stores where they get all the stuff that they can't sell and they pick up stuff that like targets can't sell or whatever, uh, maybe uh, a coffee uh, coffee machine it, it was a store model, you know, a floor model, and somebody stole, like, the, the little thing where you put the filter in. And then, you know, they'll go to a liquidation store, and they'll try to sell them for however much money, $5, $10. Um, that, you know, open packs of underwear, you know, where somebody, you have a five-pack of underwear, and somebody opened it at a Kmart or a Target and Walmart, and uh, I know Kmart's don't exist anymore. <laughs> and now there's only four in there and they can't sell it. They go to a liquidation store. So they probably got a donation of somebody walking in and giving away comic books or, or something. And they even said about 40 comic books available. So I'm going to assume that that main thumbnail that they used for this post was old. That had what I thought was roughly about 80 books. And I even looked at their page and or this woman's page here, and these same pictures that she sent me had been reposted on her page multiple times over multiple months. So it goes to show that these comics have been sitting there for a long time. So the first thing I did was I said this. I'm just curious because you have a $90. Now let's look, actually, let's look at this. Let's go back to the Gru. Let's go back to Gru. Look at this price tag, guys. 90 bucks. 90 bucks for a Gru, number eight. And uh, you got spine ticks all along here. Uh, you can't even see the corner. It's cut out in the in the picture. So I don't even know if there's any color breaking ticks. Uh, you see some a little color break right here. You can barely see it on camera. Um, uh, blending of the corner. I mean, this one actually, yeah, oh, you can see some color breaking right here. This one isn't as horrible as some of the other ones. This might be... Maybe just from looking at it, maybe a fine copy. All right, $90 on that. Let's look at this. I say this, just curious because you have a $90 price on a book that on average sells for only a couple of bucks. If you're really trying to get anything close to those prices, it's not worth my time, but I'm willing to give you an honest, true to market offer. Look at this. Very fine, $2. And I even saw there was um, there was more that were like four to six dollars in, in in higher grade. So again, looking at this, ninety dollars, pretty crazy, right? So let's see what this uh, individual responded to me. And I'm going to go over some more examples here in a moment. They say, truthfully, I looked them all up on eBay and took lowest price. I'm going to tell you right here, and this is just my opinion. I don't know. I don't believe she took she took lowest price at all. I, I, don't, I just don't believe that. I think that's a selling pitch. But I understand you, you don't, you're not a comic book person. And, and this is fine. And this is where I want this video to be educational. This individual is not a comic person. Okay? They own a liquidation store. And... She's probably doing the best she can with the resources that she has to figure out, well, how do I price these comics? Let me go on eBay 
It's the easiest thing that people could think of. So I'm going to respond to her trying to educate her, trying to be humble, be respectful, and give her um, some actual insight on how to do this. So this is what I say. People can throw any price on a book and list it on eBay, but it doesn't mean it will sell. People will throw outrageous prices on comic books because they assume that all comics are valuable. Also with comics, condition matters a lot. Most of these books are what we call mid-grade. See, I'm trying to, what we call people that actually collect comics. I'm not trying to belittle her. I'm trying to educate her. Most of these books are what we call mid-grade because they have a lot of defects, creases, etc. Leaving them not protected in bags and boards will also bring their value down. But a book that is, say, worth $100 in mint condition can be worth as little as $10 in mid-grade condition. Just some thoughts to ponder. And then I try to educate her even more. I say, take the Transformers number one that she has. In mint condition or near mint, it could sell for around $200, but it's probably around $50 in the condition that yours is in. I'll send you an image of sales for that book. I have access to real-time sales that are calculated into fair market values. Now, I don't I don't know if I zoomed in on the um on the Transformers number one, but it has color breaking at least a couple of like inch or two inch color breaking creases at the bottom. The spine is completely dinged up. I wouldn't put that book more than possibly a, a, a VG plus. And I sent her this. This is for Transformers number one. Um, now we could sell, we could see that, you know, those near mint plus raws are selling close to 200, you know, uh, around a hundred dollars for a near mint. But her book is somewhere around here. And I said, it's probably more like a $50 book. And that's accurate. So I'm giving, I'm, I'm trying to educate her. I'm giving her real sound advice and real sound factual data. This is her response. Okay, I have been selling a lot of them, even with creases in them. People are telling me you can fix them too. It's okay. Maybe these books aren't for you and you are looking for mint condition. These are not mint condition. Okay. Secondly, I told you that. I told you that they weren't mint condition. I said that. I set the tone for that. I never once said I'm looking for mint condition books. So this is how I respond. I'm sure comics aren't your main product, but I always like to be able to help educate people. Again, I'm being humble here. I'm not looking for mint comics. I'm just not looking to pay $90 for a book that I can buy for a few bucks. And there is no fixing color break increases or damage corners. Those are what we call non-pressable defects. And yeah, I'm I'm kind of loud. I'm kind of giggling now because I mean it's just at this point, um, it is a little bit humorous because instead of her taking my information and being humble, I believe she's being very uh catty and deflecting and kind of gaslighting me, saying, well, you know, maybe you're looking near me. I mean, you, she could sit here and say, hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm selling them as they are. Um, I appreciate you sharing the information, but this is what I'm selling them for. I mean, you can make an offer, but if it's going to be too low for me, whatever. Uh, I just, I got to stand firm in, in how I'm trying to sell these. And I would have been, okay, that that's totally awesome. You have the right to ask for whatever you want selling books. But Here's some context, guys, and this is where I want to educate everyone. We have to know what we're doing when selling comic books. And I, honestly, I don't believe that she's selling these left and right necessarily because she's been posting the same pictures for months. But let's take a few examples, okay? Let's look at uh, the Judge Dread. okay? We got Judge Dread number eight. We're going to pull that up here. <clears throat> Uh, she has this book marked at $70. Now, what we got color breaks um, all along the spine, uh, parallel to the spine, uh, damage corner up here, color break right here. You got a color break right here. This, I mean, I wouldn't put this book any higher than a fine minus, a 5.5 fine minus. And again, I'm not even seeing the, the bottoms cut off. I don't see the bottom corner. I'm not seeing the back. I'm not seeing the inner pages. I'm going to put this book from what I see it at a, at a 5.5. She's got a mark for $70. This book around that range is, I mean, even a very fine is selling for six. I mean, the last near mint copy sold for two. You know, you got a fine in the fine range selling for nine. But I mean, good luck selling this book for six to six to nine dollars. She has it marked at $70. 
And that's just, it's outrageous. So for someone to have these comics and be so outrageous with it, it, it makes absolutely no sense to not at least have a conversation where you can actually learn. Because another thing that I want to educate people on here too, even if you're a liquidation store, it helps you none by sitting on inventory. Sitting on inventory costs you money. For anybody that runs a business, for anybody that has a brick and mortar, for anybody that pays fixed costs like rent, <laughs> you know that sitting on inventory costs money. You're losing money not selling these books. You want to liquidate as fast as you can. Let's go to um, let's let's go to this uh, 181 Avengers first appearance of Scott Lang. It's a nice little key here. She's got it marked at eighty dollars. Okay, we see color rub and a bunch of deep spine breaking ticks. Another one here, um, all the way down. I mean, these are deep, going deep out. Um, again, I don't even know if these if the book's still attached to the staples. You got a huge color break increase that looks to be at least about maybe uh, two plus inches right here. Um, it looks like there's another one right here that's at least, look at that, Whoop, we're all around there. That's another two inch uh, color break increase. You got this lip around the side. Um, you got uh, blended corners, another what looks to be a little color break increase right here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not putting this book any higher from what I see than a VG+. Plus. Uh, let, let, let's look at what this book um, is going for in that range. She's got it marked at $80. Right now, near mint copies of this book aren't even really hitting $80. You got one that sold for $130. That, that's an outlier. That is a huge outlier, and uh, I would look into that. But, I mean, she's lucky if she could get $20 for this book, and she's got it marked at $80. All right, we're going to look at one more. We're going to look at this uh, Marvel Universe number 14, the handbooks. That's right, the handbooks. Let's pull that up. Um, and I believe she had two images of that in here, but let's zoom in. She has this marked for $30, okay? I mean, look at this. This is just, this is horrible. Look at all this. And then you got color break increases down here. This is about an inch color break crease right here. You got probably damaged corner right there. There's a little color break. Um, uh, look at the spine. The spine, there's a spine roll. Breaks, uh, again, I mean, just deep, deep into the book. I mean, again, I would I would put this book. You got blended corners. I put this book maybe at a at a at a VG plus as well. Just from looking at it, I don't know any of the remaining damage of the book. Maybe a VG fine at a five point oh. Maybe this is this is a, a three dollar book. Maybe, but you find these in dollar bins all day long. Three dollar book. What does she have it marked for? Thirty dollars. So again. What I want folks to take away from this video, it I like to share a lot of these things because anybody that buys comics or wants to buy lots or anybody that even just goes to any type of thrift store or garage sale, you can find two extremes. Sometimes you can get people that have it priced so low that you can score deals or sometimes you have people that do this. Oh, look, it's comic books. They must be valuable. And it goes back to a video that I just recently posted, what, about a week and a half ago. The biggest myth, the biggest myth in comic collecting. Your comic books aren't valuable just because they're comic books. All comics aren't valuable. All comics aren't something that have this crazy high demand where, oh my gosh, I'm going to price these books at extreme price points and then not even be open to having a conversation obviously with this individual right here i made it clear that i wasn't just sitting even trying to lowball this individual as i'm sharing information that i pay for this is cover price guys i pay i pay 6.99 a month for this information and i'm sharing it with her so maybe even if even if we didn't work anything out she could take that that um transformer book and maybe market well i'm gonna I'm a market at 60 dollars and see if i could sell it for that because obviously it's been sitting on her shelf for months i could take that scott lang and instead of pricing it at 80 bucks i could maybe i mean good luck her getting 20 for it 
hey, market at 40. You know, I always tell sellers, I mean, still, you want to ask high and, and buyers could, could, you know, negotiate low. But again, she is so out in left field with um, her, the inventory that she has here. And I don't think it does her any justice to sit here and kind of sit on this high horse and act as if I'm wasting her time or basically being in, ingenuous with uh, or disingenuous with my communications with her. Like I said, she could have just came out and said, look, I appreciate you. I understand what you're trying to do. Um, hey, maybe these, these prices are kind of out in left field, but you know what? I'm okay with that, and I'm going to keep the prices as they are. Thank you. So, again, guys, I'm going to end this video saying this. If you come into comics, but most of you watching this probably aren't people like this. You guys know comics. That's why you're here. But even on the flip side, if you see people that don't know what they're doing, don't just come out and like, you know, make a mockery of them or attack them or be rude and disrespectful to them. Give them the opportunity to become educated. Say, hey, look, you know, I know you're doing this, but this is this. Show them cover price. Anytime I go and buy a collection, you know, if they don't know what they're doing, I pull up cover price. I just bought a collection where I pulled up cover price with the sellers at the garage sale and was showing them right. I was showing them right there cover price and what these books are selling for. So share the information, be courteous. But at the end of the day, no one to walk away and say, yeah, these this I ain't changing this person's mind. But and then I can have a little giggle. Then I can have a little giggle because it's just funny because. I'm going to come at, next, first off, next time I'm in Stockton, maybe it's a year from now, two years from now, I'm going to go to this store and see how many of these books are still sitting there with these insane, unfathomable price tags on them. <laughs> guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, love hearing you guys' thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Be well, and until next time.